Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel, and today we will be reading Mr. Harrison is Embarrassing. The reason that I chose this book is because one of my friends' last name is Harrison, but this is Harrison, which is very funny, so let's read this. This is my weirder school um, what's the word? Series, book two. And let's get started. School for Cavemen. My name is AJ, and I hate coffee. I do. Did you ever taste coffee? I tried it once, and I thought I was going to throw up. My parents drink coffee every day with breakfast. What's up with that? If I don't get my cup of coffee in the morning, my dad said, I'm a mess. How can you drink that stuff, I asked him. It tastes like dirt. Well, it was just ground this morning, he replied, and then he slapped his knee and bent over laughing even though he didn't say any fu anything funny. I was thinking about it. There must be some chemical in the brain that gets activated when you become a grown-up. Then, suddenly, you start to drink coffee, eat vegetables, wear a tie, and go to craft fairs. There's no other way to explain why grown-ups willingly do any of that stuff. I was walking to school with my friends, Ryan, Michael, and Neil, who we call the nude kid, even though he wears clothes. These annoying girls, Andrea, Emily, and Alexa, were behind us as we climbed up the front st steps. That's when I saw this big sign. Happy birthday, Ella Menchery School. 50 years of teaching stuff. Wow, I didn't know it was the school's birthday. The school's birthday, said Michael, who never ties his shoes. We should, we should give the school a party, said R Ryan, who will eat anything, even stuff that isn't food. So there is a footnote. If there's a footnote, I'll read it after I read each page, and then I'll read it. And I'm going to read it now. That's a grown-up joke. That isn't funny to kids. Sort of like those dog whistles that humans can't hear. Yeah. School, schools don't get birthday parties, said Andrea, rolling her eyes. They're not people. That's right, said Emily, who always agrees with anything Andrea says. Fifty years! Alexia said, that's a long time. Yeah, yeah, I told everybody. When the school first opened, the students were probably cavemen. I'll bet they taught the kids reading, writing, and how to start a fire by rubbing two sticks together, said Neil. And they didn't have to learn history back then, said Ryan said. Because nothing happened yet. Me and the guys laughed and high-fived each other. It was hilarious. Boys, Andrea said, rolling her eyes again. Hey, said Alexa, back in those days, instead of buses, kids probably rode to school on dinosaurs. I laughed and high-fived Alexia. She is pretty cool, even though she's a girl. Andrea put on her mean face. The dinosaurs died millions of years ago. Alexa, sh Alexia, she said, she said, that was long before there were people. Can you possibly be any more annoying? Alexia asked Andrea. Wow, that what? That's what I was going to say. Andrea gave Alexia another mean face. 
Michael pulled open the front door of the school. That's when we saw the strangest thing in the history of the world. But I'm not going to tell you what it was. Okay, okay, I'll tell you. The teachers were walking around like zombies. They all had their hands out in front of them. And this dazed took in their eyes. Mr. Docker, Mrs. Cooney, Miss Coco, Miss Holly, all of them. Some of the teachers were groaning, drooling, and bumping into the walls. What's the matter with the teachers? Andrea asked. This must be acts like a zombie day, I said. Maybe they're filming a horror movie, suggested Ryan. Are you uh, okay? Emily asked Mrs. Yonkers, the computer teacher who was stumbling aloud, around like she was asleep. Must have got a coffee. Mrs. Yonkers just stared back with creepy horror movie eyes. Must must have coffee, she muttered. Need coffee, groans Mr. Mackey, the reading specialist. Will, <coughs> will die without coffee, <coughs> mumbled Miss Hannah, the art teacher. Grown-ups are weird. Chapter 2, The Night of the Living Teachers. All the teachers were stumbling around like it was a dead scene. Out of a night of the living dead. It was cool. We all went into the front office to see what was going around, going on. What's going on? I asked Mrs. Patty, the school secretary. Our coffee machine is on the fritz, she said. What's a fritz? I asked. And why would you put a coffee machine on one of them? Maybe they should take the coffee machine off the fritz, and it would work again. Oh, the fritz means something is broken, Arlo, Andrea said, rolling her eyes. She calls me by my real name because she knows I don't like it. Your face is on the fritz, I told Andrea. Fritz? That's a weird word. Suddenly, our principal, Mr. Klutz, came rushing in from his office. He has no hair at all. I mean none. Mr. Klutz looked like he would have been tearing his hair out if he had any hair. I don't know what to do, he said. If the teachers don't get their coffee in the morning, we could have a disaster on our hands. <laughs> teachers were wandering in and out of the office like monsters. Must have coffee. Need coffee. Life is empty without coffee. Go to Starbucks. Okay, Starbucks is the correct answer. Boy, grown-ups sure do like coffee. What is the problem? We've got to do something shouted Emily, and she went running out of the office. Where's Miss Lazar? asked Mr. Klutz. She usually takes care of the coffee machine. It's her day off, said Mrs. Patty. Miss Lazar is the school custodian. Things always seem to go on the fritz when she has a day off. I thought the teachers were going to start a riot or something. But you'll never believe who walked into the door at that moment. Nobody. If you walked into a door, it would hurt. But you'll never believe who walked into the doorway. It was Mr. Harrison, the tech guy at our school. He fixes computers and laser printers and copy machines. He is really skinny, and he has blonde hair. Good morning, good morning. Mr. Harrison said to everybody, he was hold, holding a paper coffee cup. I guess he must have stopped off to buy coffee. 
on the way to school. Some of the teachers saw his cuff and surrounded him. Must have coffee, groaned to Miss Laney, the speech teacher. Mr. Harrison leaned his head back to finish his coffee. Ah, that hit the spot, he said, throwing the cup into the garbage. Miss Laney reached into the garbage, <coughs> garbage can, grabbed the cup, and tried to lick a few drops of coffee from it. Maybe you can help us, Mr. Harrison, said Mr. Klutz. The coffee machine is broken. Yeah, it needs to get off the fritz, I added. Can you fix it? Mr. Klutz asked, if we don't get any, get some coffee soon, I'm afraid the teachers will be revolting. Some of the teachers are already revolting, I said. Leave it to me, said Mr. Harrison. I can fix anything. They don't call me Fritz Harrison for nothing. Flip. It's Fritz, is Fritz really your name, I asked. No, it's just my nickname. What's your real name, I asked. Oh, I can't tell you that. A bunch of teachers gathered around to watch while Mr. Harrison examined the coffee machine. It's simple, really, he said. The water goes into this tube to drip area. To the drip area. This switch sends electricity to heating to a heating element. And blah, blah, blah. Sensors, blah, blah. Fuses to keep it from getting too hot. Blah, blah, blah. One way, well, blah, blah, blah. Filtration system and blah, blah, blah. Mr. Harrison went on like that for a million hundred minutes. He made it sound like the inside of the coffee machine was a rocket ship. So, do you know what's wrong with it? Asked Mr. Klutz. Sure, Mr. Harrison asked replied it's not plugged in bruh he plugged in the coffee machine and it started making coffee right away the teachers cheered and clapped clapped him on the back hooray for mr harrison they yelled he fixed the coffee machine he should get the nobel prize he's our hero Chapter 3, Big Noise. There's a footnote. That surprise they give out to people who don't have bells. Okay, that is not true. I honestly don't know what it is either. <laughs> okay, Chapter 3, Big Nose. After the teachers got their coffee, everything was back to normal. Or as normal as things ever get at. Ella Menchery School. The bell rang and we rushed to Mr. Granite's class. We pledged allegiance. We pledged allegiance, did word of the day, and had circle time. That's when we all sit around that's when we all sit around the circle. So it was the perfect name. Okay, turn to page twenty three in your math books said Mr. Granite. We've been working on page 20 23 in our math books for a million hundred days, but every time we get started, there seems to be an interruption. That's fine with me because math is boring. Today, we're going to work on fractions, said Mr. Granite. Said Mr. Granite. Now, which one of you can tell me he didn't get his chance to finish his sentence because at that very moment, an announcement came over the loudspeaker. Everyone, please report, report to the all-purpose room for an assembly, said Miss Pat. Said Mrs. Patty. I did not know that was a woman. <laughs> Yay! Me and the guy shouted, "No math! What?" What? Mr. Granite groans, m moaned. Nobody told me we were having an assembly. He was mad. But I was happy because we got out of math again. I didn't even mind that we had to walk a million hundred miles to the all-purpose room. I got to sit next to Ryan and Alexia. 
sat on my other side. Andrea and that cry baby Emily were in front of us. Mr. Klutz and our vice principal, Mrs. Jaffe, got up on the stage. Mrs. Jaffe made a peace sign with her fingers, which means, shut up. <laughs> First of all, how about a big round of applause for Mr. Harrison, said Mrs. Jaffe. He fixed the coffee machine. Mr. Harrison took a bow. Everybody clapped in a circle and yelled, hip, hip, hooray, until the teachers made the shut up peace sign. Students, I have a big ne big news announced. Mr. Klutz. Mr. Klutz has a big nose. Alexia whispered in my ear. Hey, that's what I was going to say. Hmm, that's kind of sus. Today is elementary school's 50th birthday. Wait. Yeah, 50th birthday, Mr. Klutz said. Hip, hip, hooray, everybody yelled. To help us celebrate, some special visitors are coming after lunch. Mr. Klutz told us Mayor Hubble is going to be here. A newspaper reporter in Channel 7 News is even coming to film the celebration. Are we going to be on TV? Some girls shouted. You betcha, said Miss Jaffe. Eek! <laughs> We're going to be on TV. All the girls started screaming and freaking out. Eek! We're going to be famous. It's going to be like a reality TV show. Not really. Girls are weird. How do I look? Asked it. How do I look? Asked Andrea, I need to comb my hair. You look beautiful, said Emily. How do I look? You look beautiful too, said Andrea. You both look ugly, I told them. <laughs> Mr. Klutz made the shut up peace sign again. There will be one other special guest, he said. Ella Mentry, the lady. The lady our school was named after. Just like our school is celebrating its birthday. So it's Mrs. Menchery that is 90 years old today. She's going to celebrate right here with us. Isn't that exciting? Yes, said all the girls. No, said all the boys. I would say nothing, honestly. If that was me, I would not want to get involved. There's a reason why I called you all in here this morning, Mr. Klutz told us. Do you kids remember what happened the last time Ella Mentry visited our school? How could I forget? It seemed like it was just yesterday. Our school had been named the cleanest school in the district. An elementary came to the vomitorium at lunchtime to give us the award. The only problem was I shot some peas and carrots up in the air with a spoon. They stuck to the ceiling for a few minutes, but then they landed on Andrea's head. So she dumped a bowl of spaghetti over my head. I pushed a bowl of macar macaroni and cheese in, in her face, and Emily got hit by the head with a meatball. <laughs> the next thing we knew, the whole school was having a big food fight. That's when Ella Mentry showed up. She didn't give us the award for having the cleanest school in the district, but she did did dump a bowl of chocolate pudding over Mr. Klutz's head. That was a very embarrassing day, said Mrs. Jaffe. We can't let it happen again. Yes, we will. <laughs> With the reporter and a camera crew coming, we need to show our school in the best possible light. You're going in the shine lights on the school, I asked. Andrea turned around to roll her eyes at me. That means we need to be on our best behavior, 
Arlo, no. She whispered, you should try it sometime. No. Oh, snap, said Ryan. Mrs. Minchie doesn't like it when things get dirty, Mr. Klutz told us. So, let's spend the rest of the morning cleaning up the school. I want this place to be cleaning. I want the rest of the... So, let's spend the rest of the morning cleaning up the school. I want... I want this place to be as clean as a whistle when she arrives. Whistles aren't clean, I said to Alexia. Yeah, she replied. Whistles are filled with people spit. They're gross. Andrew rolled her eyes at us. Clean as a whistle is an idiom, she said. You're an idiom. Oh, oh, oh my gosh, I told Andrea. Oh, snap said Ryan. I had no idea what an idiom was, but I was just one letter away from idiot. So I figured it was something mean that I could say to Andrea. No, it isn't. Arlo's weird. Chapter 4 On the Fritz We marched back to our class in a single file. I was the line leader. Mr. Granite couldn't couldn't go back to our math lesson because we had to clean up the room for Ella Ventry. He gave each of us a rag and a spray bottle filled with water. Andrea started singing the cleanup song. Clean up, clean up, clean up, everybody everywhere. Clean up, clean up, everybody do your share. No. Except that me and the guys changed the last line to even in your underwear. It was hilarious. Clean up, clean up, everybody everywhere. Clean up, clean up, even in your underwear. Um. <laughs> Andrea thinks cleaning is fun. What is her problem? Cleaning isn't fun. Getting dirty is fun. That's the first rule of being a kid. There are a lot of rules first of being a kid. I'm telling you, there is a lot. But we did want everything to be perfect for when Mrs. Mentry and the news reporter showed up. I was cleaning off the computer table in the corner when I noticed that the screen was filled with a bunch of strange numbers and letters. That made no sense at all. Mr. Granite, the computer is on the fritz, I asked. I said, maybe I can fix it, said Andrea. I take a computer class after school. Andrea takes classes in everything after school. If they gave a class in how to take classes, she would take that class so she could get better at taking class, taking No, that sounded confusing. As it turned out, as it turned out, Andrea couldn't fix the computer. Mr. Grandet had to call Mr. Harrison on the intercom. He came running in a few minutes later. Your com your computer is on the fritz, Mr. Harrison asked. It was working fine just yesterday, Mr. Grandet told him. Can you get it off the fritz? I asked. Mr. Harrison removed the back of the computer and started poking around the inside with a screwdriver. I see what's going on in, on here. He said, your internal parallel processor, processor can't access enough gigaflops to bitmap. The binary protocol, blah, 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 blah. All we need is to upload a few firewalls so the network can't reboot your motherboard motherboard <laughs> and maximum the serial bandwidth with blah 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 dot 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 <laughs> Um why did I say dot dot dot? 
Mr. Harrison talks funny. Nobody had any idea what he was saying, but in a minute or two, the computer was working fine. Hip, hip, hooray! I cheered. The computer is off the fritz. I wish I could show you this picture right now, but I don't like showing my face, so sorry. It's Mr. Harrison looking in the back of the computer while Andrea's looking at the computer, too. And Mr. Garrett, I, Granite, is um just standing there like a person being weird. While you're here, said Mr. Granite, our smart board went off the fritz yesterday. Yeah, I said, that thing is busted. It should be called a dumb board. Can you fix it? Asked Mr. Granite. No problem, said Mr. Harrison. I just need to debug the analog Bluetooth vector, blah, 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 blah. Nobody had any idea what he was talking about. But of course, a few seconds later, the smart board was off the fritz. Mr. Harrison can fix anything. Com computers, laser printers, scanners, intercoms, microphones, even pencil sharpeners, and coffee machines. And there's a and there's plenty of old broken stuff to fix at our school. That's the thing about a 50-year-old school. Everything is always on the fritz and falling apart. One time, a piece of plaster fell off the ceiling in the hallway, and it hit Emily in the head. It was a real coat Kodak moment. Moment. We, we need to have a tech guy all the time just to fix the stuff that breaks. Hip, hip, hooray! We all yelled when Mr. Harrison turned on the smart board. I'm just doing my job. He said, when I see something is broken, I want to fix it. Can you fix Andrew's brain? I asked because it's broken. Oh, snap, said Ryan. <laughs> now, that was a good roast. I am not joking, but that was kind of mean. <laughs> but, okay. Honestly, I, I gotta admit, that was good. <laughs> Oh, snap, said Ryan. Andrea was going to say something mean to me, but she couldn't because there was an announcement over the loudspeaker. <laughs> Mr. Harrison, please report to the office. The copy machine is on the fritz again. Mr. Harrison sighed. I just fixed that old thing yesterday, he told us. It's worn out. I don't think I can fix it again. I'll just have to build a new copy machine like the old one. So you're going to make a copy machine of the copy machine, I asked? That's right. No, that's weird. Chapter 5. Mr. Harrison's Invention I was in the vomitorium eating lunch at a table, at a table with the guys, and Alexa, Andrea, and her girly girlfriends we're at the next table. What do you think Mr. Harrison's real name is? Alexia asked as she put bit into a peanut butter sandwich. He told us his name is Fritz, said Ryan, who was eating a salad. Ryan will eat anything, even stuff that grew in the dirt. Let me flip the page. Fritz is Mr. Harrison's nickname. Andrea said. He told us his real name. He won't tell us his real name. It must be really weird, Michael said. If he had a normal name, he would tell us what is what it was. His name is probably Poindexter, said Neil the Nude Kid, or Dorcas. He, we need to find out his real name. I, I said, he may be an imposter. What? Emily said. She looked all scared, like always. 
Maybe Mr. Hansen isn't a real tech guy at all, I explained. Did you ever think of that? Maybe he kidnapped our tech guy. Stop trying to scare Emily, said Andrew. I'm scared, said Emily. He probably took a laser out of one of the laser printers, I said, and he's shooting laser beams at the real tech guy right now. We've got to do something, said Emily. And then she went running out of the vomitorium. That girl will fall for anything. Emily didn't have to go anywhere because you'll never believe who walked into the vomitorium at that moment. It was Mr. Harrison, and he was holding an umbrella. How do you like my new invention? He asked us. You invented an umbrella? Asked Ryan. Oh, this isn't any old umbrella, Mr. Harrison asked. It's a solar-powered umbrella. What? Neil asked, said. I never heard of anything like that. See, Mr. Harrison told us, this umbrella was built in a, in a in solar panel. It uses the power of the sun to open it. I've been working on it for years. He pushed the button on the handle, and the umbrella opened up. Wow, we all said, which is mom upside down. You get it, guys, if you flip the word mom upside down. It will say, wow. That's neat, Mr. Harrison, said Andrea, who never misses a chance to brown nose a grown-up. Wait a minute, I said. Why would you need that? Nobody uses umbrella when the sun is out. We only use an umbrella when it's raining. Hmm, not true, said Mr. Harrison. Well, I, he, it, he didn't say not true, but he said, hmm, said Mr. Harrison. You're right, it was a dumb idea. It's not dumb, because you use it at the beach. When he threw his solar power powered umbrella into the garbage can. I guess I should forget about the other invention I'm working on. I should forget the other invention I'm working on. He said, a solar powered flashlight. <laughs> Mr. Harrison must have been pretty mad that I didn't like his invention because he stormed away. But as he turned around to leave, You'll never believe what happened. He slipped on some he spilled he slipped on some spilled juice and fell down. And when he fell down, you'll never believe what happened. His wallet fell out of his pocket. And when his wallet fell out of his pocket, you'll never believe what happened. I pounced on it. And when I pounced on his wallet, I opened it up and looked at his name, at the name on the driver's license. And you'll never believe what Mr. Harrison's first name is. I'm not going to tell you. Okay, okay, I'll tell you. But you have to read the next chapter. So, na 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 boo boo on you. The truth about Mr. Harrison. Mr. Harrison's first name is George. I know Mr. Harrison's real name, I told everybody. After I handed the wallet back and he left. What is it? Ryan asked. His name is, I said, I'm not telling. Come on, AJ, said Michael. Spill the beans. I'll be your best friend, said Neil, the nude kid. Arlo, what's Mr. Harrison's first name, said Andrea. It's George, I said. George, said Alexia. That's not a weird name. I wondered why he wouldn't tell us his his name was George, said Michael. George Harrison, said Andrea. Wait a minute. George Harrison was someone famous. He was one of the Beatles. One of the what? Asked Neil, the nude kid. What do beans have to do with anything? That was the footnote. That old rock dumbhead said michael oh yeah my parents told me about the beatles 
I played his video game called Rock Band, where, where you play Beatles songs. It's cool. Everybody knows who the Beatles were. Mr. Harrison was one of the Beatles. Beatles? Asked Ryan, wait a minute, hold up, something ain't right. <laughs> wait a minute, Andrea said. George Harrison of the Beatles died a long time ago. He must have faked his death, I told her. Famous people do that all the time, you know? That doesn't make any sense, AJ, said Michael. Why would a big rock star fake his death and get a job as a tech guy? in a school he probably hated being famous i hope i told him celebrities get sick of singing autographs and having people take pictures of them all the time he must be hiding out in our school so his fans don't bother him being a nerdy tech guy would be the perfect disguise alexia admitted but Mr. Harrison doesn't look anything like the other George Harrison, M Andrea said. I've seen pictures of him. Haven't you ever heard of plastic surgery? I asked her. And he obviously dyed his hair blonde so he would look completely different. He did not, did too. We went back and forth like that for a while. But guess who came? came back into the vomitorium at that moment. It was Mr. Harrison. It's time for the big birthday celebration, he, he said. All excited, if you want some cake, you need to go to all the per to the all-purpose room right away. I love cake. I was about to run in out of the vomitorium, but Mr. Harrison grabbed me. Whoa, not so fast, said he said, it's slippery in here. You might fall down and get hurt. I want to hold your hand. What? I looked at Alexia. Alexia looked at Ryan. Ryan looked at Michael. Michael looked at, looked at Neil. Neil looked at Andrea. Andrea and me were, we, and we all mouthed the same word. I want to hold your hand? See, I told you that Mr. Harrison was one of the Beatles, the weirdest, chapter 7, the weirdest thing on the history of the world. Let me go get some water real quick and I'll read the next chapter. Oh yeah, that definitely feels better now. Okay, I'm done. Chapter 7. The weirdest thing in the history of the world. Dun, dun, dun. We wanted to ask Mr. Hareton, Harrison if he was one of the Beatles, but there was no time. We had to rush to the all-purpose room for the big birthday celebration. I was right behind Alexia. When we got there, there was... A giant cake. A giant cake was on the stage. I mean, giant. There must have been enough cake for everybody in the whole school to have a piece. And it was covered with candles. I guess there were 90 of them for elementary's birthday. Were Mr. Harrison... Mr. Harrison went up on stage... On stay, I saw Mayor went on st stage and started lighting them. I saw Mayor Hubble talking to Mr. Klutz at the front of the room. Some guys were carrying around the big TV camera. I didn't see elementary anywhere. Before we could sit down, a lady I never saw before grabbed me by the arm. She was wearing a hat and said, press on it. And she pulled out a pad and pen. My name is Mrs. Lily. She said, I work for the News Tribune Bu Bulletin Inquirer. Can I ask you kids a few questions? 
a few questions. Sure, Alexia, and I replied. So, what's your name, young man? Said Miss... This is Lily. Asked. My name is AJ, and I hate school, I told her. Hello, little girl. Hello, little girl, Mrs. Lily said. What's your name? My name is AJ. And I hate school, said Alexia. Both of your names... Both of you are named AJ? <laughs> Mrs. Lily asked. Yes. And both of you hate school? Yes. Tell me why, she said. I need to get a scoop for my paper. Why do you need a scoop? I asked. Did your dog make did your dog make a poop? No, I mean I'm here to get rid to get a, the real story about elementary school. Mrs. Lily said. I want to scoop. I want the story behind the school. Well, the teachers here are all crazy, Alexia told her. Is that so? Mrs. Lily said as she jotted down notes in her paper. Tell me more. Our teacher, Mr. Granite, is from another planet, I told her. He built a spaceship powered by potatoes so he could go home. But a cow bumped into it and it crashed into the playground. Interesting said Mrs. Lily, writing quickly on her pad. Hey, can we press on your hat? Alexia asked Mrs. Lily. Why do you want to want to press on my hat? Because it says press on it. I told her, duh, duh. Mrs. Lily is silly. She wanted to ask us more questions, but Mr. Klutz made a peace sign so everybody had to shut up take a seat aj he said i can't i said all the seats are screwed to the floor he means sit down alexia told me i knew that some people might say elementary school is old M mr klutz announced into the microphone some people say it's falling apart not me our school has character blah 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 and our school has history blah 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 and our school has blah 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 mr Cluck's speech was really boring then mayor hubble got up to speak blah 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 he said blah 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 Blah, 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 blah. I thought I was going to die. And now, I would like to introduce our honored guest of the day. The mayor said, can I get a drum roll, please, viewers? Dun, 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 dun. The name sick of elementary, elementary school. Mrs. Elementary. Mrs. Mentry is really old. And she came toddling out of the stage with a cane. That lady is tiny. She was about the size of RT, R2-D2 in Star Wars. Mr. Klutz adjusted the microphone so elementary could reach it. I'm so happy your school was named after me, Mrs. Mentry told us. Because when you get to be my age, you forget things. And if I ever forget my name, I know that all I need to do is walk down the street and see it in big letters on the side of your school. We, we weren't sure of elementary was making a joke or not. Maybe she really does have to walk by her school to remember her name. We all laughed, just to be on the safe side. You say it's your you say it's your birthday, Elem You say it's your birthday, Elementary said it's my birthday too. Everybody cheered she said behind the giant she went behind the giant cake, birthday cake, and started to sing happy birthday. 
whole school joined and it was it was loud. Happy birthday to you. Skip forward. <laughs> Done. <laughs> when the song was over, Mrs. Mentry started to blow out the candles. There were like a million hundred of them. I thought she was going to pass out. Elementary was in the middle of blowing ca out candles when the weirdest thing in the history of the world happened. I'm not going to tell you what it was. Okay, okay, I'll tell you. All the lights went out. Chapter 8. Freaking out. Suddenly, we were all sitting there in the dark. The only light was coming the only light was coming out from the candles on elementary's birthday cake. For a few seconds nobody knew what to do. It was scary. Everybody remain calm, said Mr. Klutz. The lights in the halls are out too. Are the lights in the halls are out too, hollered Mr. Mackey. The computers in the front office are down shouted Mrs. Patty from the back of the perp of the all purpose room. Everything is down, said one of the other teachers. It's a pow total power power failure. A blackout, said Mayor Hubble. Oh no, when the parents find when the parents find out, they'll blame it on me and I won't be reelected. Why reelected? Why is it that every time I come to visit your school, some your school, something bad happens. Something asked elementary. I've had enough of this. I'm sure the lights will come back on any second, Mrs. Mentry, said Mr. Klutz. Let's not panic, said Mrs. Jaffe. I'm afraid of the dark, whines one of the first graders. I want my yelled some other little kid. Sheesh, get a grip. It was like the first graders had never been in the dark before. Those kids should take a chill pill. The only problem was that soon as one of the little first grader munchkins starts in crying, all the rest of the first graders start in crying too. And once all the first graders start in crying, the second graders start yelling and screaming. And once all the second graders start yelling and screaming, the third graders start freaking out. And that's AJ's class. The world is coming to an end, shouted Michael. Run for your life, shouted Ryan. We're all going to die, I shouted. I just, just, I shouted just for the fun of it. Mr. Klutz was probably making the shut up peace sign with his fingers, but nobody could see it because it was too dark. Mrs. Mentry, are you okay? Mr. Clutch shouted. No reply. Mrs. Mentry, silence. You could silence. You could hear a pin drop in there. That is, if there were any pins around, which there weren't. Mrs. Mentry, where are you? I asked. Mayor Hubble, nothing. Nothing. Where's Mrs. Mentry? asked Mr. Klutz. Where's Mrs. Mentry? yelled Mrs. Jaffe. Where's Mrs. Mentry? yelled Mr. Granite. Where's Mrs. Mentry? Everybody, everybody was yelling. Mr. Mentry was gone. The search party. Chapter 9. Guys, where do you think Mrs. Mentry is? I think she's in the cake right now okay let's keep continuing the search party when all the kids realized that elementary was missing they stopped crying and yelling and screaming and freaking out everybody was worried about mrs mentry i'm sure the lights will come will be back on any moment and we'll find mrs mentry said mr klutz for now i need everybody to stay calm calm who can stay calm when all the lights are out and the 90-year-old lady the school is named after has disappeared? Ella, the teachers were all saying, where are you, Mrs. Mentry? She was right here a minute ago, she said, said Mrs. Coco. 
she gifted the gifted and talented teacher. I saw her standing there. Maybe she went to the bathroom, said Mr. Doctor, Doctor, the science teacher. Maybe she's hiding, suggested Mr. Mrs. Yonkers. Yoo-hoo, Miss, said Miss Laney. Miss, Mrs. Mentry, come out, come out, wherever you are. This is tra, tra, this is tra, tragedy, said Mr. Klutz. How do you lose a 90-year-old lady? She's pretty tiny, said Mrs. Jaffe. She could be anywhere. We have to find her, said Mr. Oh my gosh, Mayor Hubble. If anything happens to Mrs. Mentry, the voters are going to blame it, blame me for it on election day. All the grown-ups were upset. Well, all the grown-ups were upset except for one, the newspaper reporter, Mrs. Lily. Now I have a story, she said excitedly. I can see the headline, X teacher Ella. I think. Mentry vanishes into thin air. Police are baffled. Finally, I'll have the scoop. I'll, I've been waiting for my whole life. Why don't you just go into the store and buy a scoop? I asked. Mr. Harrison lit all the candles on the cake again. Now we could see a little. Mr. Klutz, he said. I think I know where Mrs. Mentry might be. Where? She have, may have wandered down the, to the basement, meant Mr. Harrison said. But to, but to get to her, I'm going to need some little people. Why, said Mr. Klutz. I think she fell in a hole, said Mr. Harrison. She fell in a hole? Somebody yelled she fell on a hole, uh, a hoe. Somebody else yelled she flew into a hotel. Somebody else yelled everybody's yelling out all kinds of crazy stuff that had nothing to do with falling in a hole. You say you need some little people, Mr. Klutz asked. How little? First graders and second graders might be too little, said Mr. Harrison. Fourth graders and fifth graders might be too big. I need some third graders. I volunteer, sh shouted Ride Michael and the new Neil the new kid. We do too, said me and Alexia. I want to help find Mrs. Mentry too, said Andrea, who all always wants to help grown ups so they'll like her. Then, of course, Emily volunteered because she does everything that Andrea does. Good, said Mr. Harrison. Each of you come up here and take a piece of cake with a candle on it. We'll use the candles to light our way until the lights come back on. You won't see you won't see me. We get we get to we get to have cake. We get to have cake, said Ryan, who is always thinking about eating. Cool. Follow me, kids, said Mr. Harrison. Digger. We took a piece of cake from with a candle stuck in it and followed Mr. Harrison downstairs. I felt like a secret agent sneaking around in the dark. It was cool. Basements are scary, Emily said as we made our way downstairs. Yeah, there are probably monsters down there, I told her. Stop trying to scare Emily. To scare Emily, Andrea told me. I'm scared, said Emily. Hey, can we eat this cake? asked Ryan. You can't do that, said Mr. Harrison. We need the candles to light our way. If we had solar-powered flashlights, I'd said, I said, we wouldn't be able to eat the cake. We would be able to eat the cake. Well, you can't use your cake as a flashlight and eat it too, said Mr. Harrison. We finally, finally we reached the basement. At the bottom of the stairs, there was a hole in the floor. I almost fell in it. I noticed this hole yesterday, said Mr. Harrison, and I think I know who made it, too. Who? We all asked. A squirrel? A squirrel? A squirrel? Mr. Harrison told us. 
that he had noticed a squirrel hanging around the monkey bars in the playground, digging deep holes in the dirt. He even gave her a he even gave her a name, Digger. I think Digger might have dug a hole into the school and chewed her way through the electrical wire. He told us, he told us, that would knock out the power, and Mrs. Mentry might have fallen into the hole. Why is everybody saying squirrel? That's a footnote. In, in the, in the hole, in the floor. Wow, we all said, which is mom upside down. If Digger chewed through a live electrical wire, Mr. Harrison told us, she probably got the shock of her life. There might be fried squirrel down there. Ew, gross, we all said. Poor Digger, said Emily. I wonder what a fried squirrel tastes like, asked Ryan. Fried squirrel would have to be cooked in oil. Andrea said, that's what fried means. If Digger was electrocuted, she would have been broiled or baked. I take a cooking class after school, so I know these things. Okay, that, that yeah, I, I see a picture right now. <laughs> it actually kind of looks scary a little. Not, not scary, but the hole looks, um... Kinda deep. <laughs> Why can't an electrocuted squirrel fall on Ale Andrea's head? Wait a minute, said Alexia. If Mrs. Mentry touches that li live wire, she could get the shock of her life too. You're right, said Mr. Harrison. We got down on our knees around the hole. Mrs. Mentry, are you down there, Michael hollered? There was a long pause, and then, of course, I'm down here, yelled a faraway voice. Why is there a hole in the floor? I'm going to sue the school, Mrs. Mentry shouted pretty mad. The school is 50 years old, Mr. Harrison yelled into the hole. Stuff is breaking all the time. Tell me what you see, Neil said. Any dead squirrels down there? I can't see anything, Mrs. Mentry shouted. Get me out of here. I need to call my lawyer. Don't touch any wires, said Mrs. Mentry. Andrea warned her. Mr. Harrison looked at us seriously. I'm too big to fit through this hole, kids, he said. Oh, a few of you need to go down there and help get Mrs. Mentry out. We all need to go down the hole, except for Emily, who was scared, of course. Mr. Harrison chose the skinniest ones, me, Andrea, Alexia, and Ryan, to go down there and rescue Mrs. Mentry. We, we, yep, I can't read, <laughs> so where was I? Mrs. Mentry, we lowered ourselves through the hole. One at a time. It was scary, but exciting, too. The candles on our cake did, didn't did give off a, light, a lot of light. I'm down, I said when my feet touched the bottom. It was dusty and dirty. Mrs. Mentry, Andrew asked, where are you? Silence. Do you see anything? Alexia asked. No, no. I've just seen a face, said Ryan. Where said Andrea? It was Mrs. Men. It is. Is it Mrs. Mentry? At that moment, the scariest thing in the history of the world happened. I heard a deep rumbling sound, and then a crash. And the next thing I knew, the ceiling was falling on top of us. It was a cave-in. I don't want to hold your hand. Help! That was the first word I heard when I opened my eyes. I'm not sure if I was out for a few seconds of a few uh, or a few hours. It didn't feel like I had broken any bones or anything. There was concrete and dust and and junk here and junk here there junk here there and everywhere. Am I dead? I asked. I don't think so, Arlo said Andrea. Unless we're both dead. 
I knew I couldn't be dead because if I was in heaven, because if I was, because if I was in heaven, Andrea wouldn't be there when the dust was cleared. I was in a little cave deep beneath the ground with Andrea, Alexi, and Ryan. Luckily, the whole school hadn't fallen on our heads, except for a few scratches. We were all okay. I couldn't hardly see any a thing. My candle was gone. My cake was gone, too. I was cold. This was the... This... Except... Wait, where am I? This was the worst thing to happen since TV turned off week. We're trapped, Ryan said, like those miners in Ch Chile. Those miners were underground for months before they got rescued, said Alexia. Hey, maybe we'll be on TV when we get out, I said. The miners in Chile were on TV all the time. TV, said Andrew, all excited. How do you... I look. Is my hair messed up? I couldn't even see Andrew's dumb hair. It was it was so dark. You Will you stop thinking about how you look for once? Luxia told her. We could die in here. Die? I hadn't even thought about dying until Luxia brought it up. I wish I could run away to Antarctica. Antarctica and go live with the penguins. Then I heard another voice in the distance. It was coming from far above our heads. It sounded like Mr. Harrison. Are you okay, kids? Are you kids okay? He yelled. I feel fine, yelled Andrea. An emergency rescue crew is coming, he hollered. They have a giant drill. We'll have you kids out of here soon, of there soon. Where did you get a giant drill, I asked. From a rent a giant drill, Mr. Harrison said. You can rent anything. What about Mrs. Mentry, Andrea asked. She's not with us. She's not with us. She's okay, Mrs. H Mr. Harrison said. Just before the cave-in, she crawled out of the hole that Digger dug in the playground. I, I'll bet she's really mad. Ryan said, "She, she will probably never visit our school again." Mister Harrison told us that it might take the emergency rescue a few hours to drill a hole through the cement and pull us out of the way. He sounded really upset. I should have known better, he said. I never should have let you kids go down there. It was Mr. Harrison. Andrea hollered up to him. I sat on the floor between Andrea and Alexia. Ryan sat down from us. There wasn't a lot of room, so we had to sit close together. I'm scared, Andrea said. What if they can't rescue us? Hold my hand. Hold my hand, Arlo. I'm not holding your hand, I told her. Hold Ryan's hand. I don't want to hold her hand, Andrea said. I want to hold your hand, Arlo, Andrea said. Don't bother me, I told her. Hey, I want to hold AJ's hand too, said Alexia. I asked if I could hold Arlo's fan hand first, said Andrea told Alexia. So, Andrea said, you get to hold his hand all the time. It's my turn to hold his hand. Stop fighting, I told them. I don't want to hold either of your hands. That's that's when the weirdest thing in the history of the world happened. And Alexia started crying. Okay, okay, I said. I'll hold both of your hands. Just stop crying. I held hands with Andrea and Alexia. Ugh, disgusting. Ooh, you're holding hands in the dark with two girls. AJ, AJ, a, with two girls, AJ, said Ryan, you, you must be in love with them. Quiet, dumbhead, I told Ryan. 
I have and I had to sit in the dark and hold hands with Andrea and Alexia for a million hundred hours. I thought I was gonna die. Isn't this romantic, Arlo? Andrea asked. No. I wish we still had our candles, said Alexia. Candles are so romantic, said Andrea. Yeah, I said, people must have been romantic all the time before Thomas Edison invented the light bulb. We were down there for a million hundred hours. It didn't seem like we we were ever going to be rescued. Arlo, Andrea said, do you want to know a secret? No, in case we don't make it out of here. I want to tell you something, said Andrea. Something I've been waiting to tell you for a long time. I don't want to hear it. She loves you, said Alexia. That's not that's not what I was going to say, Andrea said. What I wanted to say was, but she didn't get the chance to finish her sentence because at that very moment, we heard a loud drilling sound above us. They're coming to rescue us, I shouted. We, we all cheered. Finally, I could go let go of the girl's hands. The drilling got louder, and a few minutes later, we saw a little hole open up, up above our heads. Mr. Harrison put his eyeball against the hole. When are you going to get us out here? I shouted up at him. Anytime at all, he said. He won't be long. It won't be long. I'm fixing a hole. I'll get you. I'll get you. I will, I will, I will, we can work it out. I've got a feeling all I've got to do, Mr. Harrison wasn't making any sense at all. What should we do, I asked. I need you, he said. See that big rock over there? Move it over to the side so that, so the drill can get through. So the drill can get through. I tried to move the rock, but it was too heavy. I'm so tired, I groaned. I'm so tired, I moaned. Ryan and the girls crawled over to help. Dig it, Mr. Harrison told it. Carry that way all together now. Don't let me, don't let me down. Don't let me down. All the four of us pushed against the rock as hard as we could. Finally, with a little help from our friends, I was able I was able to slide it out of the way of the way. Okay, Mr. Harrison said, "We're going to drill again. Wait, get back." We moved out the way and the drill started up again. It was really loud. Pieces pieces of cement were falling around us. It was scary and cool at the same time. And then suddenly the drill came through and we could see a big hole open above us. Light flooded in. We could hear all the kids upstairs cheering. Here comes the sun, I shouted. We're saved, Andrea yelled. Andrea yelled. We were about to climb up through the hole when I heard a noise in the corner. There was movement. What's that? Alexia asked. Maybe it's the fried squirrel, said Ryan. It's not a fried squirrel, said Andrea. It's a live squirrel. It's Digger! Eek! Super squirrel. A live squirrel was staring at me, no more than two feet away. Andrea, Ryan, Andrea, Alexia, and I climbed out of the hole in the in the ground like our pants were on fire you should have been there i thought i was going oh wait yeah did i say chapter 12 super squirrel okay we're gonna start that page over a live squirrel was staring at me no more than two feet away ryan andrea alexia and i climbed out of the hole in the ground like our pants were on fire you should have been there. I thought I was going to die. If 
digger chewed through the electrical wire, how come she didn't get electrocuted? Ryan asked. We asked me when we got to the top. She must have super squirrel powers, I told him. And when the and then the weirdest thing in the history of the world happened. Digger jumped out of the hole after us. She looked all scared, like she didn't know what to do or where to go. She was sitting there looking at everybody. Ooh, look at the the cute squirrel. All the girls yelled, It's adorable, kill it yelled all the boys. We started chasing Digger down the hall. I don't know what we were going to do if we caught her, if we caught her, but it was fun anyway. Finally, one of the teachers opened the door and Digger ran out of the school. When we got back to the front office, all the lights in the school suddenly went back on. Everybody cheered. Elementary was standing by herself in the front of the hallway. One waiting for a ride home there was dirt on her face and her clothes looked kind of muddy and messed up she didn't look very happy i'll be on my way she said when she saw us i'm so glad you're okay mrs mentry said andrea will you come back and visit us again sometime sure she re she replied over my dead body. <laughs> hip, hip, hooray! Elementary's going to come back and visit us after she's dead. Um. Goodbye. 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 We all said when a car pulled up to drive her home. After it was all over, we were on the TV news. And there was a picture in the news. Paper of me being chased out of the hole. Paper of me being chased out of the hole by Digger, the super squirrel. It was a real Kodak moment. Kids were asking me for an autograph. I was a famous celebrity, like a snooky lady on TV. Maybe we'll get our own reality TV show. Maybe elementary, elementary will sue elementary school. Maybe Mr. Harrison really is one of the Beatles. Maybe Digger will dig another hole into the school. Maybe Mr. Granite will get through page 23 in her math book. Maybe Mrs. Lily will finally get a scoop so she can so she can lick pick up her dog's poop. Maybe grown-ups will stop drinking so much coffee. Maybe I'll find out what Andrea wanted to say to me when we were trapped in the cave it cave in maybe we'll finally get off the fritz maybe we'll be able to talk to mrs mentry into coming back to visit our school again while she's still alive but it won't be easy d end so guys i read that whole entire book in one video because i want i feel like it and i just wanted to so, guys, I hope you enjoyed this book. Mr. Harrison is embarrassing. My Weirder School Book 2. I hope you enjoyed this book. And I have two more books waiting in on my desk right now. But I'll read it next time. So, guys, don't forget to subscribe, like, and comment all down below. Bye. Hope you have a good night's sleep because it's like, nine o'clock <laughs> right now when i'm filming or 10